Welcome back, my name is Guy and this is the last video of my shop cabinet upgrade series. This time I'm going to make all the drawer fronts for these light duty drawers, make all the doors, all the shelves and apply the finish. Then I'm going to go on to installing everything and taking care of a few small details. Let's get to work. I'm going to start off with the drawer fronts for the upper cabinet. I've got a piece of half inch plywood here and I want the grain to flow from one end to the other. I've kind of marked out everything, put some triangles on there so I can get it back. And I just need to start cutting this up and getting all those parts pulled for the drawer fronts. I've got that sheet cut up and basically what this is, is it goes from left to right across the fronts of the drawers. And I've saved the last two pieces on top because I need to cut all these, edge band them, put them on the front, and then figure out what the final dimensions are for the ones on top. So the next step is to go over my miter saw and start cutting these to final length. Well, there's all the drawer fronts cut to size, except for the top row, of course. And now comes edge banding. A lot of edge banding. I hate edge banding. Well, after a couple hours, I did get all the edge banding on the drawer fronts and the top drawer fronts cut and those edge banded too. And here's the corner cabinet. You can see I've got it all sequentially cut and I've got a real nice 16th inch reveal all the way around. So now that those are done, I can start working on the doors. Now, a lot of people keep asking where I get my plywood from. I mentioned it in the first video. This is all from Home Depot, so it's all very accessible to everybody here in the U.S. Uh, it's American made. It's made by Columbia Forest Products. This is their Pure Bond product. It's poplar cord. In this case, it's a maple veneer on the front. Very nice plywood. I've been using it for years. I, I highly recommend it. All 13 doors cut. More edge banding. All the doors have been edge banded. The drawer fronts have been edge banded. And over here, this pile is 16 adjustable shelves. Those are obviously going to go on the pins inside the cabinets. Those all needed to be cut and have edge banding on them also. I'm done with edge banding. I'm getting ready to spray all these pieces. I'm going to be using the same general finishes, water-based poly I've used before. I've got a Lazy Susan set up, so I'm just going to spray. These are the bottoms. I'm going to do these first and the sides. Then after I get done spraying them, they're going to go into this drying rack over here. I'm going to do two, maybe three coats, sanding in between. This is going to take me probably the bulk of a day, if not two days, to get all this done. So I'm going to get to it. Well, after the first coat, all the pieces are up on the drying rack. And uh, this drying rack held up pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. So after this dries, I'll sand it back with 500 grit sandpaper I've got on a spongy sanding pad. And then I'll put another coat on. So here's the hardware I need to install these doors, and there's quite a bit of it. Uh, you know, there's 28 hinges, a bunch of adjustable shelf pins, 20 door handles, and a lot of people have been asking me where I got all this. I bought this from a, a place called Custom Service Hardware. I tell you what, the, the prices are fantastic. The stuff is in bulk, so that's why. The service is really good, and the shipping was really fast, so I'm really glad I found them. And I'll leave a link to their website in the description below. I'm going to install the hinges in the doors now, and the hinges are going to be these 35 millimeter cup hinges. And to get these in here, I need to drill some recesses in the doors. Now, the nice folks at Rockler sent me one of their jigs, and this is actually pretty cool, and I'm going to show you how this works real quick. 
So I'm going to put the hinges three inches from the top and bottom. Now I can take this jig, clamps up like, goes like this, and there's some lines here that I can line up with the line I just made, and I can clamp this to the door face itself. And I'll do the same on the other side here. Now I'm going to take the stop that's included, put it up against the door bottom, and tighten that down. Now I've got a positive stop, and I can just repeat this over and over again with the different doors. Now the second part of the jig is this, and this is just a cup that has a 35 millimeter Forstner bit in it, and I've got a stop here, and I'm just going to chuck this up into my drill, and then this fits on a rim right here, like that, and now I can just drill down, and it'll drill to the depth I want at the inset I want, which in this case is 5 millimeters. Now that I've got those two holes drilled, I can just remove this and then just keep moving along the other doors until I get them all done. Now the other half of this jig system from Rockler is this template right here that allows me to put the clips on the inside of the cabinet. So there's a center line here. I've marked the center line of where those uh, cup hinges are. I just need to line that up, hold it in place, and take my drill with the VIX bed again and just start those holes. Well, this is the other side of the hinge, and this just gets screwed in those two holes right here. Make sure that this opening is towards the back. Now with these two clips installed, I've only really tightened the bottom one and the top one here because I'm going to have to adjust these a little bit. These just clip into those. So there's basically three ways you can adjust this. The first way is up and down. And that's just simply by loosening these screws here. I'll loosen this one here in the bottom and the one on the top. And then I can move this up and down to get my 16th inch here at the bottom. There's this screw right here, which moves the hinge in and out this way. So I can level it with the face of the cabinet. Then there's a screw back here. Sorry for the crappy camera angle. But there's a screw back here that actually moves this door in and out this way and that'll allow me to get the gap right on the side and by the other door. Well, it took me about two, maybe three minutes, and that was for both doors. That uh, jig really helped out immensely to get this done quickly. So I've got a nice 16th inch reveal all the way around. I know it's kind of hard to see. Sorry about the crappy camera angle. And there's a nice 16th inch in the, between the doors. And the doors are nice and flush to the edge of the cabinets. Well, all the doors are installed, but I still have to cut grooves in the shelves so they sit in the uh, adjustable pins. And those are actually going to act as the stops for the doors. I've got all the adjustable shelves in and I put a small felt dot on some of the adjustable shelves. Those actually act as a door stop. Uh, that was all, all by design. I have a couple other things to do and those involve the upper cabinets and the drawers themselves. <laughs>
Well, everything is pretty much done. The lower drawers are about 60-70% full, the same thing with these mid-level drawers. I still need to build the holders and things for my planes and other hand tools that are going to go in this cavity right here. Almost all the upper cabinets are full. Probably about 70-80% full. Now I need to work on this clamp rack over here, or lack thereof, and get all those clamps off the floor so I can get the three machines that I wanted to over in this corner, which are a drill press, small bandsaw, and morrison machine. And then I have to make a new bench right here because that one is just too darn big.